Welcome to TAC Talk. I'm your host, Nadira Nazir. I have the pleasure to welcome Stephen Crawford, MPP for Oakville, on the show today. Stephen attended the University of Western Ontario to study political science and then went to University of Toronto for business. After completing his education, Stephen worked as a financial advisor at Midland Whirlwind. He went on to become a senior executive and senior equity partner at Equity Funds Limited. The company became one of the fastest growing asset management firm in Canada, growing to almost $10 billion in managed assets. Stephen resides in Oakville, with, where he lives with his wife, Nadja, and four children. He is a member of the Oakville Chambers of Commerce, 100 Guys Who Cares Oakville, and the Royal Canadian Military Institute. He's also a vocal supporter of Plan Canada, Because I Am a Girl campaign which focuses on empowering young girls' right to education and healthcare globally. Stephen was more recently named the chair of the Standing Committee for Finance and Economic Affairs. Stephen, welcome to the show. Well, thank you for having me. It's an honor to be here today. And this is an impressive resume. Yes, thank really you very Really nice. Thank I you. guess the first question that I want to ask you is, what made you decide to move from financial asset management to yeah. politics? Yeah, well, I, I think it goes back to my childhood. Um, I was very interested in public service as a child. I helped out in campaigns, election campaigns, when I was 10, 11, 12 years old. Uh, through university, I helped out, and I remember the, the big free trade election uh, I believe it was 1988. That was a, I really got involved in that when I was in school, and I I then went into business for for quite a few years and had a had a great career, but over the last number of years, I thought this province and country that I love passionately. I just love we we live in the best province and country in the world. Really, I believe that, but we can do better. And I look at our next generation, my children, the the, the kids of that generation, and I want to make sure that we leave a country and a province that is much better than, than the way we found it. So I'm very passionate about the future, the future generations that we, we pass on this great province and country. So under the leadership of our Premier Doug Ford, what kind of changes can the, your constituent anticipate in the next three years, four yeah, years? Yeah, you know, th th there's a lot. And we, as a government, we, we, we've gotten very busy very, very early. In fact, we sat through most of the summer, which is highly unusual. And the reason we did that is because we had a lot of issues that we needed to resolve after 15 years of basically the same government. And there's so many issues. I mean, one of the, the biggest issues, I guess, that I would certainly highlight is the fact that as a province today, uh, we were spending $40 million a day more than we were taking in, uh, which, which works out to about 14 or $15 billion annually. And the reason that's important is because it's quite obvious when you spend that much more money than you're bringing in, you have a problem. Mm -hmm. And I really think that the social services we have here, the hospitals, the education that we have, which are second to none, we need to maintain them for future generations. And with the kind of overspending that we've had, uh, it's going to be hard to maintain that. So we've got to get some fis fiscal discipline, uh, certainly in this, in this province. That would certainly be one of our highlights. A second one is ending hallway health care. Uh, we have people lined up in hospitals. They're waiting far too long. We have older folks that should be in either at home or in, in older uh, long-term care facilities that are not, and it's clogging up our hospitals, and people are waiting too long. And, and it's, they're actually people, believe it or not, in closets, in hospitals, and stretchers, and that's just not acceptable in this great province. So we need to do that. We've made a commitment to build 6,000 more long-term care beds, Right away, we're going to build 15,000 over the next five years, which will help alleviate some of that. But we're also doing a major medical review. Uh, we've hired Dr. Ruben Devlin, who is, uh, out, has an outstanding career in the medical profession, and he's going to review the entire healthcare system to see what we can do more efficiently to, to, to alleviate some of those problems. So those are a few of the things. There are, there are many more which I can touch on, but those are a few of the, the key points that I would certainly highlight. So let's bring it home. Let's bring it to Oakville, being the MPP of Oakville. What did you hear at the door when you were knocking on doors? What were the main key yeah. challenges and issues that you heard from your constituents? Yeah. yeah, there was a lot. I mean, certainly trust and accountability in government, uh, the overall debt, uh, hallway health care. Hydro was a big issue, too. I mean, we have among, well, among the highest hydro rates in North America, certainly the highest in Canada. That's bad. And the reason that's bad is because there were people that had to choose between heating and eating. Yeah, you need and a second job to pay for it. Exactly. The hydro rates were just off the charts. 
people can't afford that. We've had businesses leaving. I know there was, a, for example, a, a smelter uh, company up in near Timmins, Ontario, 700 jobs. They moved right across into the border into Quebec. That was 700 jobs lost. Why did they leave? One of the main reasons was the high cost of, of energy and hydro in the province of Ontario relative to Quebec. There's other issues too, but that's certainly one of the ones I would highlight. So the high cost of energy that we have here in Ontario is, is a major issue that we have to deal with. It is, and, and also the cost of living is going up and up. Yes. I remember going to Costco and buying those, uh, some of the breads for like a dollar something. That is like two, three dollars. Yeah. Not well, even like five or six years later. You know what, you have a good point. It, it, the overall affordability of living in Ontario has skyrocketed. Now, some things we can't control, but there are other things that we can control. Uh, hydro obviously being one that I think has been badly mismanaged, but our government's trying to do what we can. We've frozen driver fees for driver's licenses, for example, and uh, that's just one little example. Hydro, obviously, we, we've cut. We want to, there was some proposed tax increases that we, that the previous Liberal government had actually put into place to come into effect this year. We put that on halt. And we've also uh, brought in a program called LIFT, which is the low income uh, tax credit. And that's basically for people earning under $30,000 are going to pay no income tax. Excellent. So we're saving those folks a lot of money and that's putting more money back in their pockets. Yeah. And every little saving counts. Absolutely. So we're going to take a quick break. And then when I come back, we're actually going to be talking about any of the upcoming event in Oakville that will be hosted by the MPP Stephen Crawford. We'll be right back. Combine a love and passion for food with authentic Mediterranean flavors. Add a touch of warmth and relaxation, and you'll have the best dining experience at Alpha Wall Restaurant. Located in the heart of Mississauga at 2273 Dundas Street West. Bring your loved ones and reward your appetite to an exquisite halal prepared menu. Our secret ingredient is just a hinge of love. Each plate prepared with care, creating a universal piece of art. Make every bite a memorable moment with All For All Restaurant. Welcome back, everybody. We are here today with MPP Stephen Crawford of Oakville. Uh, so thank you so much for telling us about what led you into, mm -hmm. uh, into politics and all the great work that you guys are doing provincially yeah. to help with the constituency and to help people save money. What I want to talk about a little bit more is about what can the people of Oakville ex expect from an event perspective that's coming up that yeah. you are hosting? Yeah. Well, we, we've, we've had a few events recently. We had an open house. We have a new constituency office. It's located on uh, Rebecca Street, right by Rebecca and Kerr Street in southeast uh, sort of central Oakville. So we did have that event. We have an event coming up on, and I encourage everybody to uh, to come out on Saturday, March 30th. I hope you can come out. We have yeah, a, mark your calendar, guys. It's yeah. Saturday, March 30th. Saturday, March 30th at Excellent. 3 o'clock to 4.30, we have a family skate day. So everybody is welcome to come out and bring their skates. You can rent skates if you, if you don't have any. It's free of charge. We're going to have uh, hot chocolate and snacks. And uh, that's at the Trafalgar Community Centre, which is at Rebecca and Kerr. So we're, we're excited about hosting that for everybody in the community of all ages. That'll be a fun day. There'll be more events we'll announce as we go through the summer. But I can certainly tell you this. Oakville is a, is a community that really hosts a lot of great events. We have so many yes. great events in Oakville from Canada Day to Midnight Madness to Kerfest. So I encourage everybody to, to look at some of the town uh, websites and, and get a handle on that because we have a lot of great events in Oakville. And, and this year we're going to get Stephen. He doesn't know that now. I think he's just going to learn this right now. We're going to get him to walk in high heels in support ah, of okay. violence <laughs> against women. So he's going to be in pink shoes. I would love to do this that. September. You give me the date, I will be there. Absolutely. I'm not sure I'll be able to that. walk very well, but <laughs> I will try. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. It's only 450 meters. Okay. So you'll, you'll be able to make all it. All right. And we look forward to your support I and all the great work that you're doing with the community yeah. as well, too. I would love to do that. And, and I know there was a few things that the prevent, prevent, provincial government did for tuitions at Sheridan College. Yes. So uh, Oakville, of course, yes. is home to Sheridan College, one of the greatest colleges in Canada. It's It was the uh, incubator and the place where the, the the Broadway show Come From Away was actually created. So Oakville has a lot of great cultural uh, events, but also a lot of great schools. Sheridan College, uh, we, we announced uh, just recently a tuition cut across the board. The first time in pro the provincial history, a 10% across the board tuition cut for colleges and universities. So that is going to have a huge savings to students. You know, our, our tuition has skyrocketed 
over the last 10, 20 years. We have the highest tuition in Canada, and uh, we're just trying to help people out to make life more affordable here. And talking about education, I know you're part of a group called Empowering for Girls to yep. help them get education yep. and healthcare yes. globally. Tell us a little bit about that and also how people can get engaged. Absolutely. So uh, it's an organization called Plan Canada, okay. and it's uh, called Because I'm a Girl. And uh, it's a fantastic organization. I mean, every study in the world will tell you that societies and countries that have equal rights and equal access to education for, for both genders are more peaceful societies, they're more prosperous societies. And we need, you know, there's many countries still, and, and we have issues in our own country, but particularly other countries where, you know, a lot of girls don't have the right to the same sort of education that, say, we do in Canada. So this organization, Plan Canada, because I'm a girl, really focuses on helping girls, empowering them, educating them. I've been involved in that for a number of years. My wife, Nadja, has been involved, and uh, we, we do fundraisers and help support them, and we'll certainly be doing more fundraisers in the future for them. And I encourage everybody uh, to go take a look at uh, Plan Canada's website on that to see how they can be engaged with that. Okay, and at the end of the show on the credit, we'll share your website where they can find out information regarding the skating, and also we'll share about yeah. a big uh, because I'm a because girl. Because I'm a girl, yeah. Because I'm a girl. And um, what made you decide to be engaged with that specific cause? Yeah, I think, well, as Is I it because of the, f I didn't want to <laughs> say it, I figured maybe you'll share it. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so, well, I mean, obviously the, the facts I mentioned, but, but yeah, I certainly have, uh, I have four girls myself. So I have uh, two sets of identical twin girls. They're uh, ages uh, 13 and 8. So, wow. uh I only have two birthday parties a year, though, because of the, the twins, so that uh, helps out a little bit. But, uh, you know, we, we need to ensure that our girls are, are really leaders in the next generation. Again, in Canada, but around the world. I mean, there's still improvement we can do in Canada, of course. There, there's a long way to go, but other countries are even far behind us. So we need to, we need to help girls around the world uh, reach their potential. Absolutely. And for folks that are listening to us right now, for viewers that want to get engaged, it's because I am a girl. Uh, how can they simply get engaged? Like, how can they help? Is it from a volunteer perspective, monetary, especially when it comes to abroad? Yeah. What are the different things that they can do? Yeah, so actually both the things, you touched on both of the key things. So people can help with their time, okay. so they can volunteer. And again, I'd encourage them to go look at that website. Uh, but they can also, you know, they can make donations, which are charitable, and uh, they'll receive a tax receipt. So financially and time, and I certainly, myself and my wife, Nadja, and, and my kids actually have helped out uh, also uh, support with both financial and our time. And uh, we're, we're proud of that. You're surrounded by f great female energy yeah. every day. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a quick break right now. And then we're going to come back and get to know Stephen on the lighter side. Let's find out what his favorite color is <laughs> or what his favorite place is. So we'll be right back. Combine a love and passion for food with authentic Mediterranean flavors. Add a touch of warmth and relaxation, and you'll have the best dining experience at Alpha Wall Restaurant. Located in the heart of Mississauga at 2273 Dundas Street West. Bring your loved ones and reward your appetite to an exquisite halal prepared menu. Our secret ingredient is just a hinge of love. Each plate prepared with care, creating a universal piece of art. Make every bite a memorable moment with All For All Restaurant. Welcome back, everybody. We're here with Stephen Crawford, MPP for Oakville. So let's get to know Stephen. Let's get to know his likes and dislikes and what he likes to do on his downtown. Are you ready for this, Stephen? I'm ready. <laughs> okay, I'm going to start with simple things. What is your favorite color? My favorite color would be blue. And not surprisingly, I'm <laughs> wearing a blue suit and my party's colors are blue. Do you have a favorite meal? A favorite meal? Well, uh, I guess uh, it would be, I like all kinds of food. I'm a foodie, so I, I like just about everything. So Indian food, Chinese food, Vietnamese food, Canadian food. Um, in terms of the meal of the day, I would say dinner, but uh, I, I, I like everything. So let me reposition this. If you can only have, let's okay. say, one cuisine for the rest of your life, oh what boy. would it be? But let me tell you what it is, because I've given it a lot of thoughts. For me, it will be Japanese. Japanese? But simply because you have your sushi, you have the sashimi, you have your tempura. There's a lot of different variety, yeah, teriyaki yeah. Yeah, in yeah, there, yeah, right? Yeah, you know what? I am going to concur with you, because I think it's... 
I could eat, like there are other foods that I like, but they might be a bit heavy, but Japanese is a nice mix. So I think if I had to have one, it would be Japanese. All right. So are you a beach person or mountains? Which one do you prefer? Oh boy, these are tough questions because I, I, it depends on the day. Like I like to climb mountains and I've done that and I love beaches too, but... Uh, what brings you peace? Beaches. Yeah. So I like both, but peace, I would say beach. So I come from the island of Mauritius. Mm -hmm. so I have not I been there, but I want to go. Yes, it's beautiful. So I grew up with a beach. So I always thought that beach is the way to go. Yeah. I'm going to love beach. Yeah. Until I went to the Amalfi Coast. Yeah. There was the beach and the mountains. Yeah. And then I'm like, hang on a second. I think I'm both. Yeah. It's such a beautiful combination. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Uh, what's your favorite movie? Favorite movie? Oh, boy. Oh, I, I, I do like a lot of movies. Um, I guess my favorite would be going back a while, but it'd be Wall Street. Wall Street? Yeah. Why Wall Street? I don't know. I just love that movie about the excitement and uh, finance. I guess I'm a finance guy, so I have a bit of a bias. But quite frankly, I love all kinds of movies, dramas, comedies, you name it. Mine's actually a musical, Grease. Grease, I, I know Grease. <laughs> that was a, you know what, if there's a musical, that would be my musical. And the only reason why I think it is, is because it was the very first movie I went to see at the movie theater in Mauritius. So that brings back a lot of great yes. memories yep. to me. Yeah, I actually remember watching that movie as a child and standing in line in square one and want to watch that movie, so. It's, it's a great movie. Yeah. I can watch it all over again. It's one of those, it doesn't matter when 40, John Travolta 40, and Olivia Newton-John. Yes, uh, yes. Yeah. Yes, and some great moves yeah. there at that time. Yeah. Um, what's your favorite vacation spot? Uh, again, it's hard to say. I, I've traveled a lot. I mean, I've been to Africa, South America. Um, favorite travel spot would maybe be South Africa. And uh, what appeals to you with South Africa? Uh, it's that mix of beaches and and geography, it, it, history, it's like, it's a combination of all the things that I like. So there's a relaxing beach element there, as well as there's a lot of history and natural beauty. So it was a real mix. But, you know, I, I just love traveling around the world. And when you have quiet time, which I know is not very often, what do you do? Let's just say, I know a lot of people would spend that time with the family. Clearly, you have to prioritize family. But if you had just time for just mm -hmm. yourself, what is your go-to things to do? I guess my go-to thing on my own would be to uh, to read and uh, just relax, put on a little bit of music um, and my alone time, which I don't get too often, but when I do, that those would be the things that I would do. And what kind of music you like? I like all kinds of music. I like uh, everything from jazz to rock, uh, even some new, you know, new pop music. Um, so I'm pretty diverse in my musical tastes. I'm just, uh, yeah, I like all types of music. Do you have a favorite book? Favorite book? Oh boy. I have a library. Um, is there one favorite book that I can think of? I can't really think of one. Oh, one book. I'll give you my example. One book that kind of transitioned and changed your way of thinking. Mine is Eckhart Tolle, The Power of Now. Yeah. I really like it because it teaches you how to be in the now. Yeah. Because people, like right now, we may be talking, but our mind is somewhere else. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But this book, The Power of Now, teaches you how to be in the moment and how to appreciate the moment. Yeah, yeah. So for me, this is one of the books that I read yeah. over 10 years ago that still stick with me. Still sticks and with I you. still try to apply it on my day today. Yeah, yeah. Do you yeah. have such a book that kind of made well, a, an Im significant impact, whether it's a financial book that made I guess, a significant uh, impact? Again, I, I've read all kinds of books. I typically read more nonfiction than fiction. I, have read, I do read a little bit of fiction. I haven't read as much lately, but... Um, there was a book uh, that I uh, wrote a, a passage in the back of the book, which was a really great book. It was called The Servant Warrior Leader. And that was a book about, uh, basically, it's, it's about leadership and, and how leaders, you know, leaders are based, there's a lot of managers in the world. And managers just can bark orders. But leaders really get people to follow based on leadership. Right? People want to follow a leader. And, and, and a good leader is going to turn other people into leaders. And multiply it out, and uh, that book I think had a lot has had a lot of impact on me. But uh, but that's the tip of the iceberg. I, I, I really I, I've enjoyed so many books on so many different subjects. It'd be hard to really pinpoint one, but that's certainly one that stands out. And you're very right, though, especially uh, 
everybody has a different delivery and approach to leadership. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, a good leader is somebody that can motivate yeah. uh, their people and also show the vision. Yeah, absolutely. And leaders come in all shapes and sizes. Yeah. And that I, I really, you know, I would want to emphasize that. And I, I'll tell you a very quick story from, from that book, if I could, uh, about a lady called Ocelia McCarty. And she was an old woman, uh, African-American woman who lived in Mississippi. And as she was approaching her 90s, she had saved up a lot of money over her whole life. She lived in a very, very, very humble abode, never got married, never had children, and saved up a couple hundred thousand dollars. This is in the 1990s. Bill Clinton was president. And, uh, I mean, that was a huge sum of money for some lady. She never spent any money. She just worked and did her, her laundry for, for the neighborhood. And she wanted to leave the money to for the next generation of students, uh, minority African-American students. And... Uh, and when word got out about this after the University of Mississippi, about this the scholarship that she created, she she got the, the Presidential Medal from Bill Clinton. And But what's more important, she actually inspired hundreds of people to donate money to charities. And even bigger than that, Ted Turner, who founded CNN, donated a billion dollars because he saw the, the work and the passion of Ocelia McCarty, a little old lady. So she inspired from that little humble gesture you know a man to give a billion dollars for 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 charity for children around the world so that's leadership to me it's about inspiring and motivating people that's so a beautiful and that, that's where that yeah. book i mentioned the servant warrior leader it really it really emphasized that and it's very selfless act and that keeps on giving and inspired yeah. other absolutely yeah uh, what's your favorite season? We are very blessed to live in a country where we have four seasons. Maybe yeah. maybe winter's a little bit longer. Yeah. So yeah. what's your favorite season? Again, I love all seasons, but I will. I do have a favorite here. I would have to say summer. I summer. do like. Uh, I do like. I don't mind the heat. I don't complain when it's too hot. Um, so I'm I'm good with all seasons. But I would have to say, wearing shorts and sandals around the backyard is uh, is good for me. I love summer, but very close, I like fall. The yeah. reason why I like fall is the beautiful colors. Yeah. It's the change of the season. The colors are absolutely magnificent to yeah. be able to experience yeah. that. Yeah, could not disagree with you on that. Yeah, so this is your camera. What else would you like the viewers to know about you that I haven't asked you the questions yet? What else? Uh, I guess at the end of the day that, uh, you know, it, life is short. Enjoy life. Live with passion. You know, and... And I think people need to really focus on doing the things in life that they're passionate about, not, not just for the paycheck. I mean, I, the things I've done in my career and my personal life, I've done because I love doing it. And uh, I think that's the most important thing. And I, I try to encourage my children like that as well. Like, they're young, but whatever they want to do in life, I'm, I'm okay with. It's, it's, they've got to love what they want to do and be passionate about life and uh, enjoy life and try to be positive and... and positive to everybody that we meet and come into contact with and uh, you know if everyone does that imagine the world we'll live in yes and I know off camera earlier we were talking about the Millennials I think there's some really great stuff that Oakville yourself as an MPP of Oakville can do for the Millennials yeah. to motivate them yeah right I know there's a lot of them that are self-motivated but there's yeah. also a lot of them nowadays that are staying home much longer mm -hmm. not as motivated and excited to do something maybe there's certain initiative that could be led that could help yeah. and assist them yeah. into transitioning into more self-sustaining lifestyle yeah yeah, I mean, we, we, for example, we founded a youth student council, and it's a nonpartisan group of high school students from around Oakville that we're going to get together every six or seven weeks and uh, talk about issues relating to these young kids today and what, what's important to them. Get them involved, get them engaged, because I, I think we really need to get people engaged and involved at a young age. So that's one of the initiatives we're doing. But, uh, you know, we were always happy to have people come by our office, or if they're willing to volunteer, we can always, you know, put that out there as well and everything you're doing is on your website they'll be able to find that information if they want yep. to get engaged yeah and I strongly recommend the viewers if you want to get engaged in Oakville please reach out to our MPP here uh, Stephen Crawford and go check out the website and to see how you can get engaged or book an appointment if you have any new ideas as to what can be done to mm -hmm. make Oakville Ontario a better place mm -hmm. Right. Absolutely. Steven, thank you so much for coming. Really appreciate it. Thank I'm you. glad. And um, we're looking forward to the skating on March 30th and many other events. I hope you'll be there. And I yes. encourage all of our viewers. Uh, we'd love to have you there. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. 
And I'd like to thank my sponsor, Suzy Tamasi, my fashion stylist. Her website is suzyqjewels.com. And, and a portion of her proceed goes to the woman's shelter. And one, my wonderful makeup artist, Una, as well, to today. Please follow me on Instagram. Subscribe to TAC TV. And stay positive and start believing. Thank you so much for joining us today. Until next time.